Sprite Castle. Sprite Castle. Sprite Castle. With your Rob O'Hare. Sprite Castle. Hello and welcome to another episode of Sprite Castle. On today's show, we are going to be playing the classic Activision game Pitfall. Uh, I just recently played the Activision game Toy Bazaar, and that reminded me of Pitfall, and so that's why we're playing Pitfall today. Seems like a good enough reason for me. Uh, Pitfall was released in 1982 for the Atari 2600. It was a huge hit. Um, some people, uh, lots of people, refer to it as their favorite uh, Atari 2600 game, and so um, naturally Activision began porting it to other systems. And you uh, can see here, this is the Commodore 64 version. Now, uh, the the game itself remains unchanged. If you're familiar with the Atari 2600 version, uh, you are Pitfall Harry, and your job is to run around and collect uh, all these treasures, and in theory... The goal is to collect all the treasures before the time runs out. Uh, I don't think I've ever done that. I don't think I've ever beat Pitfall. I've never. Uh, it's just not... <laughs> not... Um, uh, I won't say it's beyond me, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't have the patience, or maybe I haven't tried it long enough. But um, uh, So the game itself is unchanged. The It's the same goal. It's the same everything. The only thing uh, that you may notice is updated graphics and updated sound. So, uh, if I can go ahead and get started here, you will see uh, F1 to start. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so as I run around here, uh, I'll turn down my sound here just a little bit. Uh, here's a stationary log. Here's rolling logs. Boop. Uh, one thing that... Uh, if you know, uh, I, I know I've mentioned this, and pr I probably mention this every time I, I see Pitfall or think about Pitfall, but um, the the great, great book, Racing the Beam, which talks all about uh, Atari 2600, <laughs> uh, game development. Uh, why did I just do that, stupid? Uh, and uh, the, the technicalities, the limitations, the technical limitations of the Atari 2600, um, and one of the things it talks about is that the, um, this joystick is not where I'm going to blame it on the joystick, uh, that uh, backgrounds in the Commodore, or in the Atari 2600 had to be symmetrical, so the left half of the screen and the right half of the screen uh, were mirror images if you did it as a background, so if you go look at Pitfall, you'll see that the, um, the trees on each half would be symmetrical. Um, so obviously you can see that's one thing that that's changed in this version. Uh, like on this screen right here, you can see that the uh, tree in the, the furthest left is not the same as the tree on the furthest right. I don't know if that makes it a better game necessarily, but um, uh, you can also see that um, slightly different than the uh, some other versions. Uh, we have a little bit more color here. Pitfall Harry is wearing uh, a blue shirt. Unlike the commoner version where he wears green, I believe, which uh, I guess is because the green foliage that's back there is he going to make it. Oh, look at that! Da -da -da! <laughs> I'm a dork. Uh, I don't know if... Uh, I, I believe I've read that there, one way is running is uh, easier to start running than the other way. But um, So I do believe I remember that. What I don't remember is which way is easier. Let's see if we can make it across here. Ta nope. Should have jumped. Well, I'm doing terrible at this game. Um, so, I'm going to play this until we get at least one treasure. There's a little animated fire for you. Brick wall down there. So, um, you can see the animations in this are a little bit better. Well, they are better than the uh, Atari 2600 version. I'm not any better at playing it. Actually, I would say that I am better at playing the Atari 2600 version. If uh, I haven't played this in a while, and uh, like I said, I I don't know if it's this joystick or if it's the uh, USB interface, but I have just the slightest amount of lag that's making it um, more difficult to um, do some of the more precise things, like jump on the alligators. And I'm gonna wait here. For just no, I'm gonna 
but uh, so Pitfall Harry uh, great game Pitfall is obviously a classic, classic 8-bit game. Uh, I say 8-bit game. It was ported to lots of other things. I, I think, uh, in fact, I think I just saw a Java version of it available not, not too long ago. Oh, let's see, I can't really... I'm going to have to go quick. Um, it was a cartoon. Whoop! Sometimes I think my sound effects are just as, as good. Hey, look, and there's a money bag. Doo -doo -doo. A little scorpion down there. So, uh, like I said, not uh, not too much to say about this game. It's it's Pitfall, just like Pitfall for the Atari or, or anything else. Um, but uh, I think the, the graphics are obviously a little bit better. Uh, gameplay is the same. Sound quality is, is, uh, is good. I like it. Now you're good at it. Anybody that watched this for four seconds knows. <laughs> Didn't need me to tell them that I've never beat this game. Um, I don't really have that much more to say about uh, Pitfall for the Atari 2600. Probably going to go back and play some uh, Larry Bird one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, I waited too long. I'll never make it. Uh, anyway, Pitfall for the Atari 2600. Uh, good game. If you are a fan of Pitfall, then this is a good version to play. Um, if you are better at games than I am, <laughs> I just did terrible on this. I almost, there's a part of me that wants to redo this whole episode because I just did so terrible on Pitfall and that's embarrassing, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it out. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to see all the episodes of Sprite Castle, you can find them on SpriteCastle.com. If you have suggestions, feedback, requests for uh, other games you'd like to see on the show, you can email me at SpriteCastle at gmail.com or you can come join us over at Facebook at Facebook, Facebook forward slash SpriteCastle. Uh, you can also find all the videos on YouTube forward slash Sprite Castle. And the best place to find everything is over at throwbacknetwork.net where you can find Sprite Castle along with all the other great retro podcasts that we have on the network. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.